with the introduction of the Forerunner 265 series and Forerunner 965, Garmin has expanded its Forerunner line of smartwatches, but are there enough updates to justify an upgrade from more established models? Although it is clear from the name that the Forerunner series is aimed at runners, it is not the only line of Garmin smartwatches developed for this market. Aiming for runners are the Venue, Fenix, Epix, and Enduro series. The Fenix, Epix, and Enduro are premium running watches, in contrast to the entry-level Venue range. The Forerunner 255 and Forerunner 955, respectively, are succeeded by the Forerunner 265 and Forerunner 965. The Forerunner 265 is the less expensive of the two and, like its predecessor, comes in two sizes. A 42mm version that is formerly known as the Forerunner 265S, and a 46mm version. By comparison, the Forerunner 255S from the first generation has a 41mm casing size. The Forerunner 965, on the other hand, is only offered in one size, and has a 47mm dial, which is also larger than the 46mm case of its predecessor. The Amol Touch display, which takes the place of the previous model's transflective memory and pixel display, is the largest improvement of the new Forerunner smartwatches. The new screen includes an always-on mode and is crisper. Moreover, Garmin has kept the option of operating the watch only with buttons. In the Forerunner 265 and the Forerunner 265S, the bezel is made of fiber-reinforced polymer, and the display is shielded by a sheet of Gorilla Glass 3. Like its predecessor, the Forerunner 965's display, which is somewhat bigger than the one on the previous iteration, is shielded by Gorilla Glass DX. Nevertheless, titanium replaces the fiber-reinforced polymer bezel. Garmin has reorganized the Forerunner series with the new watches, by eliminating some variants. The Forerunner 265 does not have a music version that is more expensive, in contrast to the Forerunner 255 and 255S actually, because the new watches offer offline playlists, there is no need for one. Both devices contain 8 gigs of storage, which is twice as much as the prior model. The Forerunner 965 features 32 gigs of storage, however unlike its predecessor, it is not available in a solar variant. Although it's unclear if Garmin will reveal one later, the longer battery life makes it appear unnecessary. On a full charge, the Forerunner 965 can operate for up to 23 days in smartwatch mode, and for up to 31 hours in GPS-only mode. In contrast, the Forerunner 955 has a battery life of up to 42 hours in GPS-only mode, and up to 15 days, 20 days for the solar version, in smartwatch mode, 49 hours with solar. The battery life in smartwatch mode for the Forerunner 265 and Forerunner 265S is 13 days and 15 days, respectively. In GPS-only mode, it becomes 20 hours and 24 hours, respectively. The new watches are charged using a specialized plug charger, rather than wireless charging like the just-announced Garmin Vivo Move trend. Unlike their predecessors, the Forerunner 265 and Forerunner 265S now enable Wi-Fi connectivity. Moreover, they support ANT, Bluetooth, and Garmin Pay. The Forerunner 265 series and Forerunner 965 have the same features as their Forerunner in terms of health, activity tracking, and smart functions. Of course, the Forerunner 965 retains its superiority because of its high-end capabilities, like Climb Pro, real-time stamina, and built-in maps with full-color mapping. Price of $499, the Forerunner 265 and Forerunner 265S are twice as expensive as the Garmin Venue SQ2. They are also offered in a choice of six distinct colors. The Forerunner 965, on the other hand, costs $599, making it more expensive than the Garmin Instinct crossover. The new models cost $100 more than the ones that came before them. The Forerunner 265 or 265S's improved storage capacity with offline music compatibility, the Forerunner 965's improved build quality and battery life, and the Forerunner 265's higher quality display, are all notable changes that account for the price increase. Yet, it depends on the purchaser's individual needs whether these improvements are sufficient to convince them to move from older Garmin Forerunner models. What do you think about this comparison? I would be interested to know your opinion. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I'm sure good luck is on your side.